what's that big pink thing, Mr. Newble? Um, well, you guys, this is a banana squash. And I grew them in my garden. Grew them in my garden. Look how big that is. It's so big. And really delicious. Slice it up into little cubes. Fry it up with some salt and pepper. Mmm, you know that's going to taste good. Winter squash. Statistics, here we go. So we're helping you guys on uh, topic three practice test. So we're going to do a Hank Aaron versus Barry Bonds assignment here, practice test with STEM and league plots. And if you look through your data, you're going to see the smallest number of home runs um, was in the teens. And then, uh, so if you can look through your data there, you see one, oh, so you see one right about there. So that would be like there's 16, 19, 13. So the teens, that's like the smallest, right? And so bonds, if we look at bonds, it's going to be a 16 um, as well as a 19. So we got uh, 16 and 19, basically circle it, check it off, underline it, whatever you're going to do to memorize it. And then uh, Hank Aaron's, we have a 13. So don't forget that it goes in this direction for the person that you're doing the back part, and in this direction going forwards. So you'll notice with uh, Hank Aaron's, Hank Aaron, um, that we had uh, how many 40s we had. So we had two 40s, that's these two numbers right here. Then we had uh, one, two, three. So we had three 44, 44 numbers. Whoa, no, we have four of them, one more. So 40, four 44s. And then we had a 45, and we had a 47. And that was all the 40s for Hank Aaron. And then Barry Bonds, trying to figure out who's the better home run hitter, whoa. So Barry Bonds, so his 40s, let's take a look. So we had a 4T right there, and then a 42, and then a 45 and a 45. So we put 0, 2, 45, 45. So the uh, numbers as we go to left to right represent 40. The next one's uh, 42, 45, 45, 46, 46, 49. Cool. So that's called the back to back stimulus plot. Make sure you plot all that data carefully. It does say to do a paragraph explaining comparing the two. Please write a paragraph both describing the distribution and comparing Bonds and Aaron as home run hitters. Make sure you answer our original question if Bonds truly is a better home run hitter than Hank Aaron or not. Remember doing stocks for both. So if you're doing AP stats, you would actually write it in a nice paragraph discussing the shape, outlier, center, spread of our data, average and median. Um, since we're in regular statistics, we're just going to kind of focus on the socks only and not make it um, so much in a paragraph format. But we're going to do it in socks. And so don't forget that uh, socks is a shape. If there are any outliers. Center, right? Center stands for the uh, average. And the median is our two centers which we worked on last quarter, so you should be hopefully pretty good at that by now. And then we have the spread. And of course, spread is the maximum minus the minimum. So you're going to find both the spread for Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds. Yeah, do it. Thanks. Um, so next, we go down, and they want you to produce a histogram of uh, Bonds home runs by hand. And uh, hopefully, if you go by tens, you could probably just use, right? You could probably just use the histogram that you, what the? You could use the histogram that you use from this data right here. Remember, because you draw rectangles around. Um, I'm not sure how far those go. But if you, yeah, you can make turn your head sideways. Turn your head sideways and take a look at it. That's your histogram. So you've kind of already done it by doing the stem and leaf plot. But go ahead and make a histogram. And don't forget to label your graph. And so your graph will be like, what, home runs per season? 
Going to my tens. Um, going to my tens. Now, the one you might need help with is the heart, um, the heart pulse rates. by like trying to work out the percentile. So I don't know if you remember in class, but we worked out like the percentile. And percentile has to do with the ordered position divided by all the ordered positions. So you're supposed to put all this data, for number four, you're supposed to put all this data in order from least to greatest. And so it turns out that we have, if you count them all, um, so we have 49 data, right? We have 49 data total. And then if we go from least to greatest with our calculator, we do sort ascending. Do you remember how to do that in your calculator? Stat button. And then we do sort ascending, right? This one. Um, it'll list all that data. And then you'll find that uh, the 65th heart rates. Um, as a percentile of all the data is the 22nd position. So you would then do 22, 22nd position, out of 49. So what is the 22nd position out of 49? So you can go ahead and put that into your calculator, 22 divided by 49 like that, and you get 0 0.448. But let's double check on that and we pause. Okay, we're back. Get ready for our STEM Expo. And uh, so anyways, yeah, so bring in the lanyards. So thanks again for watching this video, you guys. Um, so the 22nd divided by 49, which is the 0.4489 percentile. So we would round 0 .44, 0 0.4489 um, up to the 45th percentile as our answer. So that's how you find a percentile, right? It's the ordered position of what you want, the ordered position, we have the same problem on the test. So ordered position um, divided by all the total data, or all the total positions. Ordered positions, or positions, yeah. Cool. Okay, so then, uh, ooh, this is a good one on the test. Remember I promised this one? A few weeks, three, four, five weeks ago. If a distribution is skewed to the right, then, well, do you remember what a distribution skewed to the right looks like? So it looks like it's a majority of the data is on the left, and then it tails off towards the right, towards a smaller number. So do you remember, so the median or the average gets pulled towards, gets pulled towards the tail. Can you remember? So it is going to be that the median stays put, right? The median stays put, and it's going to be the average, it's going to be the average that gets pulled towards the tail. And if these are numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then the average is going to be higher, farther along, right? Let's say the median is three. And the average is four, so it's the it's the median. It's the average is going to be um, greater than the median. So that's going to be C. Average greater than median. Um, so that's if it's right. If it's if on the test I change it to the distribution is to the left, which I might, then it'll be switched the other way around, and the average will be less than median. Cool. Awesome. So honestly, with the question six, it's just talking about subwidth intervals, but it won't be on Canvas or anything. It's just talking about like using like zooming with your data, basically. So if you have a set of data in your L1, and you push zoom six, um, first let's get rid of that graph. So if you have a, you get a second stat plot, so you go into your plot one, turn it on, say it's uh, L1, for example, and then make sure it's on histogram. And then we push graph, may or may not work. And then we push um, zoom nine, which is zoom statistics. There you go. So those subwidth intervals, if you just defaulted, you know, please don't leave it at 6.8, which is the zoom, which is the zoom nine. Um, so it wants you to choose a different subwidth interval. So the subwidth interval is basically your scale. So don't use 6.8, maybe use five, for example. And how many subwidth intervals did this make? So I pushed graph and it made a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so twelve, maybe if you use five. 
This isn't the Aaron's data, so that's why it's not matching up with yours exactly. But that's the idea. The subinterval width is your x scale. And then how many intervals is just how many, you know, four? Just how many um, histogram bars did it make, basically? Okay, now you want to do, um, let's see, comparing distributed peaks and clusters of both Hank Aaron's and Barry Bond's data, which we uh, already did. Oh, make a, make a histogram about Aaron's data, right? So is it, is it similar to that, maybe? Maybe not. Uh, draw a histogram that displays skew to the right, which we kind of already did. Uh, bimodal dot plot, make a dot plot skew to the left. Can you do trimodal? Can you do trimodal? For the test. Um, so mode is the most frequent number, right? Do you remember that? Mode is the most repeated number. Find the average median of that data. Um, when you get to number 12, 13, 14, 15, I know those ones are kind of weird. So I'm here to help you on those. So basically, we find the average median of those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, numbers. And so we find our average and we find our median. Is there an observation from question 12 that when changed, the mean and the median will equal each other? Can you get 94.5? Can you get that 394.5 right there? Can you like lower that? in your calculator by changing the outlier, which is 550, and lowering it down is what it's trying to say. Lowering it down. And so we take 550, which is the outlier, and lower it down. Keep going, keep going. One of our stats, one of our stats. Keep calculating the average median, keep calculating the average median until they equal each other. And then tell me what that 550, what you changed it to. Was it 540? Was it 530? Was it 535? Was it 505? 500? 490? 480? So which number made the average equal the median? Right? Which one? Which, which number is this? You guys just guess and check, guess and check, guess and check. And then describe the shape of this data knowing the median and median aren't equal. So what does it mean again? When the average, right? When the average is greater when the average is when the median is less basically so when the average is greater than the median is that skewed to the left or skewed to the right okay keep on working on this practice test you got this lots of helpful hints there keep on getting ready for a test don't forget to eat lots eat lots and lots of spaghetti and banana squash Woo! yeah so thanks for watching. Have a good day. Keep on working hard. Keep on working hard. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.